turns out pigs can fly and hell has frozen over apparently because we're getting Tomb Raider remasters of the first three games. I'm, I'm talking very loud right now, but I'm just so excited. I've just been jumping around, dancing around the house, trying not to cry. I cannot believe this has actually happened. I've been being tagged like crazy. You know, I, Tomb Raider has been so unrecognizable. Lara Croft has been so unrecognizable for so long. And she's back. She's finally back. So let's go ahead and dive into this video. If you somehow missed the announcement, this happened at the uh, Nintendo, uh, their Nintendo thing, right? So let's go ahead and I'm just going to watch this with you guys. Hopefully this doesn't, I'm going to watch it small screen. You guys need to watch it yourself. Find it yourself, man. My mic doesn't know what it wants to do. Okay, um, I'm just gonna watch it small screen with the sound, or with the sound. Well, we'll have sound on. I think it'll be fine. Legendary Raider returns. Here she is. The first three Tomb Raider games, all with upgraded visuals, are venturing onto Nintendo Switch in one daring collection. As the fearless archaeologist Lara Croft. You'll travel the world and face off against deadly foes and even deadlier legends. Climb, backflip, and swan dive through perilous quests spanning different countries and mythologies. Along the way, you'll solve puzzles to uncover treasures of the ancient world and unravel mysteries lost to the ravages of time. This faithfully remastered trilogy comes with all of the expansions and secret levels for each game. You can also toggle between the original polygon look and the upgraded visuals at any time. Tomb Raider 1 through 3 Remastered, starring Lara Croft, launches on the Nintendo Switch system Five months. February 14th. Five Free months. Orders begin today. On Lara Nintendo Croft's Wii. birthday, February 14th. Guys, I am blown away by this in so many ways. I could not have imagined a more perfect. I couldn't imagine a more perfect remaster. I, I couldn't style visually everything because one of my biggest worries and, and you know, us classic fans have been begging, begging for remasters for so long, but I just thought they would mess it up. They would mess it up. They would either, you know, give the, the design would look bad. They would change Lara's proportions. They would change the controls. That's a huge thing. The controls, because you know, some people who can't get good complain about the controls. And so it's like, oh, they would ruin it. They would just ruin it. I know it. But what the crap? Aspire went above and beyond. Just visually, this is, you know, using using the actual CG, the FMV, Lara Croft model template here. They, this is Lara Croft. It, it's her. This is classic Lara Croft. This isn't some reimagined version. This isn't some anything like that. It is actually her. <laughs> it is actually her. I did not think, I did not think this was ever going to happen. I am just blown away. Like, look at this. Look, it's her. It is her. And look at that too. The good old bomber jacket, shorts. They didn't change that because people called it misogynistic. She's still rocking that outfit in Tomb Raider 2. Which context behind that, I mean, she didn't even plan on going there to Tibet. She was on an enemy plane, freaking crash landed and grabbed the bomber jacket that was there. So what you'll find in all of the games, people want to complain about her outfits and act like, oh, she was such a sexist character. All of her outfits were very, uh, were, were practical for the location. Here she is in Nevada. What's like, what? She can't show some abs? <laughs> Really? Is that that offensive? Shorts? People just, for some reason, lost their minds. Just went full retard with criticizing classic Lara Croft. Just went full retard. All right. So 
For people who have been wondering, is it only on Nintendo Switch? No, it is coming on PlayStation and Steam as well. I will be buying on all platforms. <laughs> I just, I've been trying not to cry all day. Uh, so this is what makes me very, very happy. The original D-pad controller provided precise control as players navigated Lara through treacherous terrains. Tomb Raider elegantly showcased the synergy of PlayStation's capabilities, CRT displays, and intuitive D-pad controls, laying the foundation for Lara Croft's enduring legacy. Thank you, thank you, thank you for keeping the classic controls. And with the D-pad, all that. So many people are like, oh, the controls need fixed. Oh, the control. It's like, get freaking good. Get good. You know, in Angel of Darkness, they actually did need to tweak the controls a bit because making her slow walk first, all that, I get it. But with the actual classic games, one through five, you just, just get good. Just learn them because this is the thing. And what we've seen with Tomb Raider Anniversary, for example, when you change the controls, you add auto grab or there even is a manual grab option in anniversary but when you change the controls you change the entire dynamic of the game you change all of the gameplay and that's what you see with anniversary is a very watered down play school version of tomb raider one someone asked me on twitter okay i'm excited to play tomb raider two and three on this but should i just hop into anniversary for one no no are you retarded <laughs> No, not unless you want to play a play school version and just miss out on the best game ever made. The first one. <laughs> oh, I just can't. I can't deal with people who complain about the controls. Learn them. Spend 30 minutes learning them and then it'll be all worth it. Because here's the thing. Classic Tomb Raiders were built on a grid-based system, okay? So a huge, huge element of the game because with the action parts, the action was not the main focus of the game like they are now. Now it's turned into more of an uncharted action-y thing, right? But the classic games, the biggest core elements of classic gameplay were traversal, puzzles, acrobatics that played a role in both combat and traversal, right? Those were the biggest elements. Combat was still a thing, but the acrobatics played a huge role in that as well. And with the grid-based system, it actually made sense to be doing the acrobatics while you're in combat, right? It didn't really make sense to do them otherwise. Uh, like in Tomb Raider Anniversary or something like that. It didn't make a whole lot of sense. Unless, you know, in Legend, if you're doing like some bullet time stuff, which got old really fast, got very gimmicky really fast. But the classic controls are pivotal, are necessary. Because when you're, whenever you're looking at a level, you the, the whole level design itself was a puzzle. You're looking at places that you need to go and you have you plan it out in advance. You think, okay. Okay, so what I need to do, or even on the fly, that's where it gets really tricky because sometimes you have to on the fly. Um, it's like, oh, I need to do a running jump for this. Then I need to grab the ledge and then I need to do a side flip for this and then do a back flip off of this. And that is, it's just very calculated. Okay, it's math. The actual traversal and stuff was like math. It's, and if you do not have the classic controls then it completely loses that. It would play schoolify the game. So do not, I don't want to hear it. You go, there are plenty of play school, walking simulator, baby down modern games. Almost all modern games are made for those who want a baby experience and you just want to look at pretty cutscenes. Okay, you got that. But do not take away from us classic retro gamers who actually like video games to be video games, okay? All right, all right, enough of that rant. So this dude, when I talked about the Call of Duty Lara Croft and my complaints with how they made her look and she just looks like a basic girl, um, doesn't look like Lara Croft. One thing I said was you have the template right there. You have Angelina Jolie. Why not model her after her? And people are like, oh, you, you'd have to owe her royalties, blah, blah, blah. When I clearly said... Don't make her look exactly like her, but you have the reference point here. This 
is what I meant. Look at this side by side. And what I said here, same face proportions and bone structure. This is exactly what I have meant when I've said they should be using Angelina Jolie as a reference for Lara Croft. For once in a long time, Lara Croft is actually recognizable as herself. Look at this exact same face shape, right? Lips, very similar. Hers are, Lara's are just a little more sharp among the top lip, um, a little more sharp of an M, whereas Angelina's lips are more soft. Lara Croft has more defined, but still same proportions, like same, you know, they're big. Um, and the eyebrows, the arched brows, just the entire where the location of everything is on the, the eyes, the nose, the mouth, uh, all of that proportion scale, uh, very much almost exactly the same. Angelina Jolie was born to be Lara Croft. She just was, you know, she has her same face. <laughs> like she just is her. So yes, use her as a reference point. They should be doing this in the modern stuff. I'm not even about the modern realistic crap. Like y'all graphics hoes can enjoy basic Lara Croft that you can find at Walmart. Have fun with that. This is what I'm living for. Um, uh, today has just been, it's only 1 PM so far, but it has been, I've been on a cloud. I have, I did not expect this to happen anytime soon. I am shocked. And when I say I am shocked, I am shocked that classic Lara Croft is actually getting some love here. I said, can nothing bring me down today? I can't believe Tomb Raider remasters are finally happening. My heart is melting. What an amazing day today is. Finally, finally, I'm excited for something in the gaming world right now. Finally, I mean, here she is going against the Shiva statue in Tomb Raider 3. This is such an iconic fight. Um, I remember just, I have some memories of being a kid and first stumbling on this Shiva statue's scariest thing. Scariest freaking thing. <laughs> I was terrified. Um, but oh my gosh, this just looks perfect. This looks perfect. I have no complaints, none. Um, Aspire here, they are the ones who have done this and what they have, uh, some of their other titles here, you see like Civ 4, KOTOR, all this stuff, which I didn't even know what they did before. Oh my gosh, though. Oh my gosh. They blew it out of the water. I didn't expect this. I didn't expect such perfect visuals. Didn't expect a perfect recreation of Lara Croft here using the FMV model. So she is Lara Croft. They didn't change her. They didn't nerf her proportions. They didn't like she freaking is. She freaking is Lara Croft. Like, wow. Just look, look. <laughs> Same proportions, tiny little waist, those hips. The, the, the curves up here. She is Lara Croft. And here's the thing is people just want to act like it's something pornographic. Does this look pornographic to you? Not unless you're a coomer brain freaking degen. Get out of your mom's basement. Like good freaking grief. Women have. This is obviously a more like cartoony version. But women. There are women who are built like that. IRL. They exist. They exist and you can look at them without being just so coomer brain about it. Does this look like a pornographic game? No. Freaking people can't get their heads out of the gutter and they project that on everyone else. Because you know with modern society and all this troon bull crap and all that stuff too, everything is about sex. Everything. There are game character ships that they draw like rule 34 for all the time. Usually like stuff that is not even close to canon on top of all that and furries and this is my sexuality. Celebrate it. Everything is about sex. It's just weird. It's just freaking weird. So anyway, I'm happy. <laughs> I just can't believe it. I can't believe it. Ah, <sighs> yeah. All right. So there you have it for today's video. I am a ha happy camper today. I February is going to be amazing. I will definitely be streaming these games. I will be replaying them over and over and over again. I mean, this is 
this has got me excited for video games again. <laughs> ah! Hopefully, I am just like praying that these sell well. And I think, I mean, the reception has just been overwhelmingly positive. You know, um, Crystal Dynamics or Square Enix is just, oh, we don't know if there's a market for this. We don't know if people want them. We don't know if they'll... The reception is overwhelming. I do think these will sell well. I can't wait to see how that goes. <laughs> so whatever, you know, I'm, I don't have any hope for the future of Tomb Raider and what they're working on for, in terms of new stuff. We're going to get a Netflix announcement for the anime that's coming out. Um, we're finally getting announcement on that, I believe, on the 27th, uh, judging by the little teaser that Netflix dropped. Um, to me, it sounds stupid, even though Haley Atwell voicing Lara Croft is phenomenal. But other than that, it just sounds like a best friend's adventure road trip, Lara Croft zip, Jonah. Lara Croft's been a loner, like what, like we're seeing in this classic stuff. Look, there ain't no buddies with her. She isn't, she don't have no headset to talk to buddies. She is a lone adventurer, okay? I don't want to see no BFF adventure road trip. So stupid. And then if the rumors with the new games are true, um, which I've covered that, it's just going to be a nightmare. It's going to be an absolute nightmare. So let's hope those rumors aren't true, but... I don't know. Just what I've seen with the Call of Duty model of Lara Croft, this whole unification idea. I don't want a unification. As the classic fans have coined it, we don't want unification. We want restoration. This is Tomb Raider. I wish they would just, oh, let's make more games in this style. You know, you don't need no $100 million budgets and, and overdramatic cutscenes of Lara Croft crying about her retconned family story. That wasn't a thing before because this Lara Croft, her, her parents disowned her. They're out of the picture. The entire game is about her adventures, not her personal life because she lives for the adventure, right? So you don't need all that. You don't need hyper-realism. You don't need cover-based combat. You don't need mocap. You don't need the, the Lara Croft crying all the time. They're relatable. No, this this is Tomb Raider. This. And I wish they would just continue this. You have the template right there. Lara Croft is set up for an infinite amount of adventures. Just make the games focused on an adventure in this Lara Croft. It's so easy. You don't have to do all these dramatic stories and all this retarded stuff. Like freaking, oh my gosh. So, hey. You know, they can run Tomb Raider to the trash can with the new stuff if they want. I've got this now. <laughs> so I will be playing this. Anyway, there you have it for today's video. Let me know what you think in the comments <laughs> below. Don't forget to read your Bible today. And hey, if you want to have me read the Bible to you, that is an endeavor I have been working on on my new channel Bible time with Melanie Mac. Uh, I'll, it'll show up on the end card as well as in my link tree in the description here. Um, almost at 8,000 subscribers there. I'm blown away by the support there. Uh, so at the time of me uploading this, I'll only have one more video before we're done with Genesis already. How exciting. Anyway, there you have it. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I will catch you next time. And in the meantime, go boom. I'm happy! <laughs>